Gross. And I'm Leslie Hoban Blake. Welcome to the Critics Circle. Today we're welcoming back a good friend and colleague who is going to fill in for me and review a show with Charlie. And the show that she's reviewing is hysterical, from what I understand, and a perfect match, Eva, for you. <laughs> Eva Heinemann's show High Drama has been on Manhattan Neighborhood Network for over 25 years. And Eva herself is a member of the American Theater Critics Association the Outer Critics Theater Association. And she is a member of the League of Professional Theater Women, which I tried to join, but I flunked the physical. So <laughs> welcome, Eva. So I'm going to leave you two to talk about Candace Bushnell and is there still sex in the city? My answer, you don't want to hear. <laughs> we'll talk later. <laughs> yes, you mean, Leslie, you and I have a lot to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> But first, I'm going to talk with with Charles here. (laughs) Candace Bushnell's Is There Still Sex in the City is a sparkling concoction of her life, loves, friendship, successes, and failures, and that hit TV show with the Fab Four of Samantha, Charlotte, Miranda, and Carrie. I'm curious what a guy thought about all this. Well... As someone who has never read her column, her Sex in the City column, never read any of her books, and only seen a few episodes of Sex in the City, I actually had a very good time. This is Candace herself on stage, surrounded in a set that I think is based on her apartment, with her shoes, her actual shoes, or so she says, on prominent display, giving in this very breezy Marilyn Monroe-like voice her history, why she came to New York, how she started writing the Sex and the City column. A very interesting how her life has differed from Carrie Bradshaw's. In fact, she at times in the show gives you a quiz, things that happened on Sex and the City and said, did it actually happen or not? The reason that she felt she had to create Carrie Bradshaw and interestingly, what actually happened between her and Mr. Beak, which was very different than what happened on the TV show. And what happened to Mr. Big right now is not very good. Okay, well, that's I think that's for uh, another discussion. But in actual life, I think after the second season of the TV show, Big gets married. And of course, in the third season, he when they did the movie, when they made the movie. That's when they they had the mo- they had the wedding scene. That was the movie, and now right. they rebooted it again. And now it's on HBO Max, and you see them how they are in their fifties, and they're married right. with their kids grown up, and all that. So it's right. it's sort of interesting but, to come back to. But in real life, none of that ever happened. He married someone else. That was the end of their relationship. One of the devices that uh, Lauren Letaro, who directed the show very nicely, adds is the type of phone that Candace is talking on. At the beginning of the show, she has a landline, then she has a cordless, then she has a cell phone, then she has a smartphone. It's a very clever way to show the passage of time. Yeah, I I like that too. And also all those beautiful outfits she changed into so quickly. I was like, when when did that happen? And of of course, the shoe, you mentioned the shoes. She had the shoe obsession just like Carrie did. And I remember the funny thing is when I I used to get this, the Sunday Times, and I remember, you always look at the wedding vows. I remember when she married the ballet guy. I remember that was featured in it. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that's Candace Bushnell. And she got married to this ballet guy. How exciting. So I was waiting for that part. And then, of course, Carrie also dates a, ba- a ballerina. No, although they never a, got ba- a ballet. But ba- 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 yes. A ballet dancer. Yeah, she dates for Rushnikov. But he wasn't a ballet dancer in that. And that he was an artist. Ah, okay. His character was an artist. But all in all, it's, it's a lot of fun. And I have to believe that if you have actually watched Sex and the City, if you've read her books, if you're a little more familiar with her, than, with her work than I am, you're going to have a wonderful time. I had a good time. And this was really, in many ways, my first exposure to a lot of this. And also, I mean, she also gives you lessons along the way that are very yeah. useful. 
I, I, the one that I liked especially was, if you don't do it, someone else will. <laughs> yes. So maybe you better give that. I'm allowed to say the BJ. <laughs> I don't know if this is family friendly or not, but it was in reference to that. But, yes. Well, <laughs> how, how good advice that is. <laughs> I'm, I'm not. I'm not so sure. I have two. I have two single daughters, Evie. So I'm not sure that you would want to take. Or I, I would take anything she says. With a grain of salt. The thing that I found the most interesting is that she is now living in Sag Harbor. And guess who moved out uh, to be in, in the community with her? Her Miranda, her Samantha. And um, oh, who, who was the, uh, and her Charlotte. Charlotte. And, and she says, my Charlotte, my big, to differentiate them between, the, between her, between uh, them, the actual people and the characters uh, with those names on television. A very clever device, I thought. Yes. I mean, this is also, this is a fun show to go with your girlfriends. You grab a pre-made Cosmos and you get the skinny and the body of work of a fascinating woman. Yes. As someone who wasn't overly familiar with Candace Bushnell, again, you, it's, it's hard to live in New York and not know about her. Uh, I did enjoy the show. And in the one to fly playbill countdown five being an amazing one being, yeah, I would give this three and a half. However, if you are a fan of her work, if you watched all the episodes of Sex in the City, if you've read her books, I think for you, this will be a five playbill show. Fairly, because I mean, I, I watched the, the series. I, I, when, it was, when it's on at night, I mean, I can't stop but watching it. It's like you can't stop watching once you start. It's, it's, so the trouble is you're kind of stuck in this, the fake carry, and you kind of want that more. Even the reboot was disappointing to me. So, I mean, I actually would only give this two and a half. I mean, I enjoyed it. It wasn't earth shattering. It was fun. It was like, like summer read. It was like a pleasant evening, but I went there all by myself. I think if I went with my girlfriends and I had, a, you know, drinks and really made a night of it, I think I would have probably enjoyed it even more. Here's the question that I have for you ladies. Are you a Carrie, a Miranda, a Charlotte, or a Samantha? You first as the guest, Ava. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. Well, I would love to have been Samantha. My gosh, that would I mean, you know, Plato's retreat days. But um, I guess I'm a little bit of all of them, really. See, I think that's the answer. I think really she took the parts of her and made them into separate characters. I interviewed her way back in the first season when I was working for Backstage. And, and that's basically what she said. She said that this part of me is Samantha, that this part of me is Carrie. And I think that's really why they each have their own voice, but I think that's really why it's so hard to say that. I would say like, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Carrie with the Samantha rising, you know, that kind of thing. I mean, it's, there's no way to do that. So I, I, Charlie, does that answer your question? And which one yes, would you be, Charlie? Yeah. And which one which would you one? be, Charlie? <laughs> which one would I be? Uh -huh. Huh. <laughs> that's See, that's not so easy to answer, is it? See? It it is it is not as, as, especially you know I I do think it really helps to be female when you're uh, <laughs> when when you're contemplating Probably. that question. Men like I shoes mean, too, don't they? You know. Yes. I, I mean, I mean, a quick hat. question though. Both of you having seen this and I not having seen it, does she ever identify who her real people that she's basing it no. on are? Yeah, okay. No. Because you said there were real people, but they're real people, there. right? She, she does not identify their real names. Apparently, she still has a very strong relationship with them. Mm -hmm. She shows a picture of her and the actual Mr. Big. I don't oh, yeah. recall if she gives out yeah. his name or not. I've seen that. Well, that's a whole other topic right there. But Eva, this was such fun. I was sitting behind this, behind the camera here laughing. <laughs> I mean, and I'm sorry I missed it. It does sound like a funny news. You think it's going to run? Oh, yeah, because, you know, women like to get together and drink and, and see each other. It, you know, despite this COVID, we miss the, you know, and this is a I party. know. This is just a, so you like know. bachelorette parties and, exactly. and, and, and brunch groups. I know, I know. Exactly. Well, 
It's like I, going thank to you so much. you know, it's that, that kind of thing, <laughs> a fun night out with the girls, which is like, we always like to go play poker and, and drink right. beers, and we like to yes. chat and drink and talk about our sex lives. <laughs> <laughs> or not, or, or well, I agree with one. you about the reboot. The reboot was disappointing. I think it's because now they're 50 and they're doing some of the same dumb things. I mean, Samantha's gone. They were very nice about the way Samantha's gone on the reboot. Yeah, they handled but that nicely. They I did. That. They did. That was uh, but, but their characters haven't really changed. And and even when, when Big gets knocked off, I don't think I'm giving anybody the, I don't think I'm tipping the hands there. Not, if, not everybody at this knows it's not a spoiler. Well, you don't, but you're not going to watch it. So, you know, um, but even even when when Big goes, you realize that they're clearing the deck so that there can be another romance, because I don't think people want to watch eight episodes of, of Carrie and Big together. That's kind of boring. Know, who cares about rich white women anyway? We're not all rich white women, you know? Well, they got, um, no, they got, they are trying. They have a few very... Uh, very so far, they're like three black women on the show that I saw. Yes, but they're rich, so rich black women. But they're still rich people, and we're not all rich like that. We can't afford eight hundred dollars shoes for God's sake. We need to use that to pay our. It rent. was always that. It was always wish fulfillment. It's like in the depression, people went to see the movies about the millionaires. People paid yeah, their but, dime to go see now, movies about millionaires. That's fine when you're twenty and you think someday I might be rich, but when you're you know fifty and you're no longer going to be rich, it's like I don't want to see this anymore. I'm agreeing. I'm saying it, yeah. it. It got old very fast. I only watched two episodes, and it was like, all right, I don't think I want to watch the rest of this. You know. Yeah. Thank you so much, Eva Heineman. It was a really fun review. And please, if you like what you see, please press the like button if you're watching this on YouTube, and please subscribe to this channel. Yes, subscribe, and, subscribe, subscribe. <laughs> yes, and if you do, you are welcome into the critic circle at any time. Sweetie, this time I promise I will not write about you. Famous last words, because that's what I do. I'm Candace Bushnell. And tonight, I'm going to tell you about how I created Sex in the City, how hard I worked to get there, why I invented Carrie Bradshaw, and what happened to me after. Remember when sex was the opposite of what it is today? Number one, it was in person. <laughs> who wants to reinvent themselves when you spent the last 60 years figuring out who you are? And finally knowing the answer to that question and feeling good about it and feeling courageous.